other extent also Germany. Now I um, hand over to Professor uh, Matthias Juju. Xavi, welcome, and we are looking forward to your presentation, uh, which is related to a logistic problem. And this means the reorganization of the pathology departments in the COVID-19 um, era. Thank you very much, Holger. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, I see your screen and I see you and I hear you very well. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I will start. So thanks again for, for uh, including me in the program. And what I'm going to talk is on the uh, reorganization of pathology departments in two steps. First, what has happening or what is happening during the COVID crisis. And then what may happen after the COVID, the COVID crisis. So what I'm going to show share with you is the experience of Spain with a survey that was sent by a link to all pathology chairs in Spain in the moment in which the epidemics was uh, stronger in Spain. So that reflects the point, the hottest point in Spain. The survey was answered by about to 100 pathology labs, so it's more or less representative. The survey covers different aspects. It covers general changes in organization, displacement of personnel, who was very, we were very concerned about that, remote working, teaching, working procedures, and the use of protective uh, equipment. There were many, many questions, several questions. I'm gonna share with you just what I, had, I, I, I thought were the most relevant of them. So in this slide, you can see that changes, general changes in the organization of the staff was, uh, was occur in 90% of the pathology labs. And that involved pathologists, that involved trainees, administrative staff, and also technicians. If we talk about um, remote working, you can see that the significant proportion of pathologists were involved totally or partially in teleworking, in remote working, also at, le at lesser stain, uh, at lesser intensity for trainees and for administrative personnel. That was something that we were very concerned. It was a rare deployment of pathologists and technicians to other areas, to COVID units or COVID support units. And you can see that a significant proportion of pathology, 25% of, patho of, of departments have redeployment of, uh, of pathologies to COVID units or COVID support units. For technicians, that was also very important, also to other labs, to microbiology, also uh, to a lesser extent to intragnese, and also for staff, for staff, for administrative staff. So this is more or less the percentage, the mean percentage of the displaced people in the different uh, departments that answered the, the, the survey. And you are gonna see that the percentage for pathologists was about 7%. 12% for trainees, almost 9% for technicians, and almost 8% for administrative staff. So teaching was also a point, an interesting point. And you can see that the significant number of departments decided not to use any longer multi-headed microscope. And also that the sessions and even sign out even with residents, was done by virtual and online sessions quite, quite frequently. It's very interesting to see that the vast majority of laboratories in Spain changed the working procedures to adapt them to the recommendations that were proposed by the Spanish Society of Pathology, either totally or partially. And also that uh, samples were requested to be labeled as positive suspected in many departments, but in some others, all samples were considered potentially uh, infected. Then autopsies was a hot issue in Spain. You will see a significant number of departments, so more than 50% of departments decided stop autopsy 
because of decision by the director of the hospital or by the director of the pathology department. And in an, a subset of, of departments, autopsies were performed, but in selected cases. And there were, at that moment, a small group of departments that perform autopsies regularly because they had the autopsy room with the appropriate safety conditions. This is not longer the picture of Spain because we have been promoting the update of some autopsy rooms and now uh, autopsies are regularly performed in a significant number of, of departments. Uh, the question of fresh histological samples was also an issue. And you see that a significant proportion of pathology departments, 37%, received fresh histologic samples as routinely. I have to remember that in Spain, like in other countries, the epidemics was heterogeneous, some, other, some areas more heavily affected than others. But you see that in other areas, the, the samples were received just fresh in selected essential cases, and some samples were preferred to be received uh, uh, informally. So that was quite, quite uh, frequent in our departments. The issue of frozen section is there. You see that a significant proportion of the, of the departments, almost 50%, perform frozen sections uh, regularly. But there were other cases in which it was a discussion and it was a selection of those cases that in which the, uh, the frozen section was more, more interesting. And also similar for fine needle aspiration and also similar for implementation of rapid on-site evaluation for endo, endobronchial ultrasounds and the method to stain this, uh, this rapid on-site evaluation. And finally, just to comment on the, on the precaution personal equipment, and that at some point at the beginning, there was a shortage of that in general in Spain and particularly in pathology departments, but at the end, they were, and they are regularly used at that, at that time. So if, if we, we also ask for the percentage of people that got infected, and in the 100 departments that were that answered the, the question, you see a percentage of 2.44 pathologists that got infected, a percentage of 0.3 residents, and the percentage of 3.5 for technicians. Obviously, some of them got the infection at home or with the family, not necessarily in the hospital. And there were some aspects that were not addressed in the survey, but it's, I think it's worth to, to comment. In general, in Spain, that has been a decrease of surgery for cancer patients, which is of great concern because probably some patients have changed the stage of the disease. Multidisciplinary tumor wards were held regularly, but, you know, telematically. There was a decrease in recruiting patients for clinical trials in cancer, particularly for immune therapy. And there was a stop for cancer screening programs, at least for cervical cancer, for breast cancer, for colon cancer, for in this one and a half, two months period of time. And let me tell you, because several of the attendees are the representatives of other national societies, this survey can, is, has been translated in English. And if any of you want to offer that survey, to the chairs of the different countries, just contact us and maybe we will help you at this regard. So this is what I wanted to say regarding the reorganization during the COVID. But I think it's quite important what's gonna happen from now on, because we will have changes, changes in different areas. Some of the changes are scientifically related, technically related, but some of them are just managerially important. And I think that's, important to, to, to discuss. For example, in receptions, we have to install, we have already done that, but we have to, to decide which precaution measures have to be uh, you know, put. The, we, we have obviously to promote electronic requests. We have to establish rules for social distance for the personnel transporting the specimens. We need requirements for specimen bags for pneumatic tube systems, if they can even be used, for formalin-free vacuum collectors. And probably we have to ask for the COVID status of the patients whose samples we will be managing. 
also in the administration, our administration staff, maybe dividing screens. So very managerial questions that we have to address. Also the autopsy room, that's going to be touched in a few minutes. The question is whether we need all pathology departments, airborne infection, isolation, autopsy rooms as a requirement because any dead body is a suspected uh, COVID carrier or that should be restricted to some autopsy rooms of some departments. Obviously, I think we need to know about the COVID status of the, of the patients who died and we need obviously equipments uh, rules for wasting, for the contamination, and maybe, and that's that's something that we have done in Spain and in other countries, we have used percutaneous post-mortem tissue samples as alternative to, to autopsy, particularly in the time in which the, uh, the epidemics was stronger. In the grossing room, for many years since the formalin has been an issue, we have fo been focusing on chemical risk, but now we have to turn again to biological risk, and that's going to be discussed later on. But we have maybe to take to have rules for frozen sections for cryomacrotomes, rules for fixation control, laboratory waste decontamination. In the laboratory, we have different laboratories: cytology laboratory, molecular laboratory. But there are some common things: social distance, division into a chemical risk area and a biological risk area, particularly in cytology in which we get fresh material and liquid-based cytological material in which it's not clear whether the, the, it, the, the virus is killed under these circumstances. And also maybe we have to consider changing the immunofluorescence in kidney and skin from fresh tissue to fixed material. Pathologist office is going to be changing and also teaching. I don't know how is the situation in your countries, but in Spain, Many residence rooms are crowded with, with residents, not, not, you know, fulfilling the criteria, the distance, the social distance. And I think that's an opportunity for digital pathology uh, in, that, in that, at that, at that regard. And there are some unresolved issues that will be commented by the other speakers. If we rely on the COVID status of the patients whose samples we are managing, Maybe we have to know the false negative rate of these tests in our institutions. Also, we have to know if it is true that the virus remains in tissues after patient recovery and whether this virus can be, uh, you know, can produce infection or not. And in general, and that's, that's the end of my talk, we need for official rules for the sign of pathology department in the near future because I'm afraid we are going to face budget restrictions. And that's the, the comment that I would like to make. You know, as president of the Spanish societies, you know, we, I can do that in Spain. And, you know, that can be done in Portugal and Belgium and Denmark. But maybe it's worth doing that in general in Europe and then having a general, general recommendations, adapting, adjusting them to our... Uh, you know, our reality in each country. So that would be my proposal for the executive committee of the European Society of Pathology. Start working with the evidence that we have, the recommendations that we have, to propose recommendations for how pathology departments have to be in the near future. And that's it. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Okay. Now is my pleasure and privilege to introduce the next speaker.